Good day everybody, this is Men, and today I want to show you a few um, little insights and just a quick um, breakthrough or breakdown of what I did uh, to do the Christmas maps with Gaia, World Painter and how I did the images. Um, this is not a complete uh, tutorial how to do everything, it's just a quick breakdown um, of the simple steps that I did. Um, I did a more uh, in-depth video, um, around 30 minutes, um, where I went more into details, but I tried to keep this, uh, this one a, a bit more shorter. Um, for the people that are coming from, uh, from Gaia, um, this might be helpful, um, in the sense of if you're trying to do, uh, distinctive lang uh, landscapes or, um, anything special uh, in the case, but um, I am not really I'm not really 100% for focusing uh, currently on um, texturing or making landscapes directly um, primarily for 3D. Despite the fact that uh, technically you could argue that this is um, 3D. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, we are going over all of those um, wonderful maps that I created. And for, for the example of one of the tw uh, 25 maps that I did, I wanted to use the first uh, of the first week, the, the third map, uh, Thunberg. So I wanted to go uh, with all over, uh, over this quick and show you how I did it. So um, I will expect that um, neither you people will know the, uh, the program nor that you're familiar with it. Um, so. I will keep uh, terms really blank and um, if you're more familiar with this stuff, you will see all of the details here on the right. And of course, I will try to be as zoomed in as possible so that you can see all the notes, um, how I did stuff. So, okay, let's see what I did. So up here in, uh, on the top, we can see a huge uh, map unfolding. And this is the map as it's being created here in the program. Um, this program is primarily used to create landscapes and to, to do this stuff. And the, if you're familiar with World Machine, uh, the biggest major difference between the to, uh, those two programs is just the relation um, in that you're working with. In World Machine, you can um, basically uh, uh, add and subtract more landmass to your area and work with um, defined um, scale. Whereas in Gaia, you have a defined uh, area that you work within and you w work with um, relative scales. So I can scale this up up to uh, 5k map, 10k map, whatever. Um, but the relations between those distances will stay the same, but they will sca uh, get scaled up. So yeah, this is when approaching those maps, this is something that you would have to uh, take you would have to keep in mind. So let's see how this was created. Um, getting all of this bit, bit more space. So um, this is quite a medium good sized uh, layout. It's pretty simple in my opinion. Um, it has, a, the biggest feature is that is it is single uh, input dependent. Um, and then gets directly exported or transferred into the landscape that I need. Um, with this, to start with this, um, it starts with the island itself. We have an island node that is transferred into a choke point. The choke point um, map will be then reduced in size and then it will be used as a mask for the multifractal that gives us the basic um, height differences and noise uh, to the terrain that we can work with. So using this, we can use it as a base input for uh, multiple things. Um, the first thing would be, of course, mountains itself. Um, nothing much is done here, but with two recurve uh, nodes, we shape the mountains in a way that we can actually see a, a, a good uh, style of it. Um, then also, when we go back, we have this landform. We lower it uh, down below here with, um, with a multiplayer of 0, uh, 0.2, and then uh, use an aperture to expand the land mass by a factor of 10. So this will guide us as a coastline. Then we have the same thing for 
and the coast uh, with an expanded iteration of five. And of course, uh, we have the the landscape for the um, for the base terrain that we are using around the, uh, the land. And that is yeah, basically with um, a fracture terrace and everything else is the same. So nothing quite important or majorly done here. Uh, this is just to give the, the rough terrain um, that we can work with later. So you see here quite a bit of gibberish and stuff happening um, with all the combined stuff here. And this is not a, um, a yeah, this is not the, the final terrain. This will uh, is, serves as the base, um, yeah, as the base mesh uh, to work and erode from now. So we have um, a breaker node that adds more details and crevices uh, into the landscape. So you can see here. So to break up and give more shapes and more details into the landscape. Then we have an alluvium. This serves to smooth off more the transitions between hard edges between those um, between those landscapes that have been merged. And when we have the this smooth transition, um, I went ahead and used the first erode node that basically shapes and erodes most of the landscape to basically um, yeah see it in, in action. Um, and yeah, so having everything eroded and giving a base shape. So after that, um, we have an er uh, single erosion node. This one is quite uh, more for the, um, how should I describe it? Let's, let's use this part here. We have, um, I, I focus my part or my idea around rivers on maps currently, or this was the main goal of all of the maps to have a fluent a river ran round about all around the maps and this one was exactly for that. Uh, it focuses uh, mostly on detailing and smoothing off more of the landscape to create more rivers that would flow around the, the flows um, in the landscape. When we have everything smoothed off and eroded, um, the next step to add the, um, the water layer or the the base mesh for the the seabed and of course adding as you can see here the the coastline with that so we can go back to the erosion then adding the the coastline um the the beach size is pretty much turned down the, the water level size all the way to one percent um this is the height basically on, on which this occurs so you can see here that's one percent two three and so on but basically the, the, the thing uh, the point is that I would like to have a, a rough hard harsh coastline to work with to easily identify where I can place the um, the water uh, level later on in Minecraft. The next thing is to combine it with a max 100 so we have here the standard to give uh, this this palette here combine it. And then we we are doing one more thing, and this is by raising the, the terrain and adding a fault. The fault is for uh, a specific reason in the map. Um, we need some kind of data that would say, okay, so deep is the underground. Otherwise, we would have. Um, how do you describe it? the The idea behind this is to have the map uh, from 0 to 100, so from white levels, so from 0 to 100. Let's see in action. It's kind of hard to see. To be honest, it's, it's not uh, easy to see for some reason, um, but n I don't mind. So. The, the, the key idea is to raise the, bash, uh, the base mesh and then uh, adding a fault. Um, the faults are not the best way, I think, to do it. Uh, it's the most custom way. Uh, the, the faults add a minus depth to the landscape, as you can see here down below. There. 
And this gives us the dev map for the underground, which we could use then to level the water terrain uh, or the water levels around this coastline. When we have this finished. Um, we export it to the to the second tab where we have all the uh, necessary points. Okay, um, there's one more output here that is connected to the flow of um, the erosion node. And this would guide us uh, later on or help us uh, to convert everything um, to rivers. So going to the, um, to the exportation tab, we have this huge layout. This is quite big. Um, I would have to make a separate video about it to keep it a bit more short. Um, but the, ba the base idea is to extract a single points of data or um, valuable information like, um, for example, the snowfall and have basically a snow mesh, uh, a, a snow layer uh, separated um, as a texture paint. Unfortunately, this is not optimal. Um, you can see there is this gray area and this is not optimal. And my ba uh, base tip or my my pro tip for you is to uh, use an auto level to extract all, uh, or to use it as a black and white map as you would need it in wall painter and this will go then into the output so this would be then what we extracted and this is what we use then later on so maybe you can mm, it's not So yeah, this is kind of what you could uh, could expect to see. Um, this is then the black and white map for uh, what painter what I used. And this goes then all along uh, for all the maps that you can see here on the right. So we have color map, um, secondary foliage, beaches, auto map, lakes, rivers, grass, snow map. Um, rock map, height map, and so on. And there are a few more tweaks that I did in the later versions um, that I would cover then in the next few videos. But yeah, this is how I do, do my map. When exporting, uh, it's all I do always at the moment raw. Um, Normalize is a good is a good way to to uh, get all the levels all all the way up. And but if you would like to have clear um, clear black and white maps, it's it's uh, recommended to use auto level maps before the, the export and then use raw. And then when exporting, you get all the maps. Switching over to World Painter and importing all the, uh, the maps to the open uh, custom brush folder. You can um, place the, all of those then into this folder, which would be then used as the brush map. And as you can see, we have here the, the brush map that we saw just uh, in Gaia. And this will be then used in here and painted in. And the base, uh, the base idea is basically to... Let's make it blank. Turn all of this out. So this is the, uh, the base island right now. The idea is to have uh, up here the spray paint using then the, the block that you would desire. And then I have, for, for example, I have here on the top right, the Norwegian grass um, styled uh, grass paint mask that I use to paint in the grass. So. Notice that my uh, brush is directly um, in the size of, of the map. So this is important, otherwise this won't work. Um, so this is like a potato print or I don't know. Uh, there is a, a separate term for this, for sure. <laughs> but I don't remember. Um, but yeah, this is like potato print um, where you use stamps basically to print in every single uh, detail that you wish for like the beaches and then you can also go ahead use down here the deep snow layer 
align it with the red uh, cross in the center and place the, the specific maps. And then when you have custom terrains, I have uh, later on way more, and then also custom layers, you can do quite a lot of, with those maps. And then I add flower plants, plants, sea plants, um, seagrass, rocks, uh, bushes, rivers, uh, trees, or and different types of trees, basically. And this is uh, how I do my maps. And when we add all of this, plants, sea plants, grass, and those are not included, and a few bushes, then a few rivers, spruce trees, oak trees, and that's the map. When finished this, I have a uh, chunky up here, and when this map is fi uh, finished uh, exporting, I would uh, load it in uh, by changing the world, then loading the selected chunks. I would select all of those in here. When I did this, I would uh, set a few more parameters. Um, would color the the sun color, use a more more off angle or use the angle that would fit the stuff, enable a few clouds, um, make the water uh, level uh, and also a water plane then, set the camera then uh, to my desired wishes. And as soon as we have everything set, I, I go ahead and do around about uh, 10 to 15 renders of each map then. And that would turn out then to yeah, uh, be available on uh, each uh, Planet Minecraft page or map page that I release. And all in all, this is how I do my maps. This was a short version. Um, I did a bit more longer version, uh, around about 30 minutes. <laughs> but I think this this one will be the one that I will use. Um, for more uh, details and more in-depth uh, tutorials, I will go in the future for sure more into the topics. Let me know what you would like to know, um, what you would like to see, uh, what you are curious about, how something works, and I will try to make everything possible. This is Madden, I wish everybody a good day, and I hope you had fun with the video. Take care, bye bye.